The following interview was conducted with Virginia Tyler for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, August 11th, 2008 at a residence in West Lafayette. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome, Jenny. Nice to, <laughs> nice to be welcome. here. And tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and siblings in early years. Well, I was born in Central City, Nebraska, June 20th, 1925. And um, oh, I kept asking my mom for a brother or sister, but of course that was before I knew how you got them. I never did have a brother or sister. <laughs> so you're it. I'm it. Okay. But uh, anyway, grew up there and uh, lived right across the street from the grade school and from the high school <laughs> and the county courthouse, uh, which was made getting to high school very easy, except when a boy walked you home, it wasn't very far. <laughs> but anyway... How large uh, was your grade? How large was the grade school? What was? Uh, well, the graduating class was sixty-two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, was that eight grades in the grade school? Was it eight? Oh, grade, grade school? No, I mean high school. Oh, high school sixty-two. Grade school was smaller, not as many. People. I don't know. Okay. I just don't what? Really what did you do in high school? Any activities? Uh, athletics oh, or students? yes. Okay. Yes. Your book. Um, Newspaper? I helped with the uh, yearbook and the newspaper, and uh, I played tennis, and I was a city champion once, one year, um, and, um, oh, what do you call it, National Honor Society? Very good. Um, Any particular classes that you liked, that you took? Special? Were you getting Were you getting ready to go to college? Were, oh yes. Okay. Yes. And then let's talk a little bit about college. Where you went and how you made your choice. And tell us about college. I life. went to the University of Nebraska, in Lincoln, and I majored in uh, English and journalism. And um, did you live on campus? Pardon? You lived on campus. I lived right on campus. Okay. Yes. Uh, I was an alpha phi, okay. and. Uh, did a lot of extra activities there, uh, in the you know pep club and corn husker uh, yearbook and and the newspaper, and I was a mortarboard, <laughs> and uh, well my freshman year I met Tip. He was a blind date, and um, anyway, soon after that we went to one of the parks in Lincoln for a picnic, and he started reciting poetry to me. And it just amazed me, here was a scientific guy reciting poetry from memory. <laughs> I thought that was wonderful, wonderful. But anyway, um, he was drafted into the Army and... Uh, what year did you enter uh, college? What year would that have been? 1943. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. And, and he was drafted in 1944, and... Uh, he had to leave school? He Oh, yes, he had okay. to leave school. Uh, he was gone at least two years. He was on the first ship that landed in Japan after the war ended. And um, I know he helped put the cement down on one of the airports. I think it was Tokyo's airport. <laughs> but anyway... Um, he got back then in uh, 46, and of course I graduated in 47, uh, and we were married in 1947, but he had two more years to what, go. What was he majoring in? He was a pharmacy. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got a job. I could make more money working at, as a secretary in an accountant's office I made $175 a month uh, than I could working for a newspaper. Uh, but anyway, that was good. And uh, then he graduated in 49, and uh, we moved to uh, Connecticut. His favorite professor had gone to the University of Connecticut, and Tip wanted to get his uh, PhD from him. And so we lived and went to Connecticut. But I wanted to tell you how he got his nickname, Tip, was uh, 
from one of his fraternity brothers back to University of Nebraska. They, you know, they knew the slogan Tippecanoe and Tyler too, so they started calling him Tip. And where do we end up living but in Tippecanoe County? <laughs> oh. The name preceded him. Yes. <laughs> oh. But anyway. What was it like living in Connecticut in those days before UConn really took the fore with their athletics and things? Um, yeah. It was in Stores, Connecticut. Right. There Which was, is still very small. There was absolutely no store in Stores. We had to go to Willimantic. And, um, but it, it was very nice. It was... Uh, not too large. It was pretty. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not too large. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have children at that time? Um, Jean, our daughter, was born there in 1951. Uh-huh. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so we had to go to Willimantic for that. And, uh... Let's see. Well, David, our son, was born there, too, just before we left um, the University of Connecticut. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was only two months old when we left. <laughs> now, what was your career path then before you came to Purdue in 1966? What what was did, you do, uh, did you come from Connecticut to Purdue? No. Oh. Um, Tip's first job was at, back at the University of Nebraska. Um, in the pharmacy school? In the pharmacy school, teaching pharmacognosy. Uh, so we went there in um, 1953, after he got his PhD. And uh, we were there four years. And then in 1957, we moved to S Seattle, Washington, where he um, was, first of all, an assistant professor of pharmacognosy in the pharmacy school and head of the drug plant garden. But it wasn't long became he, before he became a full professor. What was the drug plant garden? I, I, I came across that when I was doing some research for this. What Tell us what that was like. What was it? Oh, it was Just beautiful. <clears throat> they grew all kinds of um, plants that uh, drugs come from. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> and, uh, so it was part of their research thing. And used some of them f for part of their research. Sure. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good. Mm-hmm. Of course, a lot of his research back then was on uh, mushrooms, poisonous mushrooms, mm. and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we were there nine years. But while while there, uh, one of the most interesting times in our whole family's life, I think, was when he had a year sabbatical over in uh, Germany. Um, Kids were 10 and 12 years old then, 1963, we went over. And um, Gene and David and I stayed in, we lived, well, we all lived in West Berlin, but Tip worked over in the Institute for Plant Biochemistry in the town of Halle, which was in East Germany. And so he would just come back to West Berlin. You know, the wall was up then. He would just come back to West Berlin on the weekends. Oh, wow. Yeah. But he had a permit, and uh, I think three times the children and I got to go over um, right after Christmas uh, in 1963, and then we were over again and took a Luther tour, and uh, we were over again. But um, the head of the Institute um, was a wonderful Christian man, Professor Dr. Kurt Motus. He won the Stalin Prize one year for his research. Um, but he gave half of it to the church and half of it to his family. Oh, nice. yes. Yes, yes, yes. What was it like living in Germany, and what was what was East Berlin like? A lot different. East Berlin was nothing. The kids and I went first, two weeks before Tip came over. At that time, I knew not a word of German, uh, but we wanted to go over before Jean was 12 so she could go half price. Uh, I don't think they do that anymore. But anyway, a professor over there, Professor uh, Rudolf Hensel, had uh, found us a place to live in West Berlin. And they met us at the airport, Tempelhof, took us to Frau Retzloff's home, and we were to share the first floor of her house with her. It was a typical old Berlin house. She spoke no English whatsoever. But 
when we first got there, in her backyard, she had this table with, oh, wonderful cake and you know, strawberries and this big bowl of whipped cream oh, like I'd never just heard of before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I shouldn't have gotten started on this. That's very nice. And then, but that oh, yeah. evening, the, the professor, Dr. Hensel, and his wife took children and I out to dinner, and they brought us back home. We walked into the house, turned the lights on, and both kids began to cry. So we all slept in the same bed that night, and I thought, oh, I've got to get us out of here. Um, but the next day was sunny, and somehow Frau Retzloff told us how to get to a bus, because I had to go to the American consulate to check in. So I did that, but I also bought some light bulbs, put them back in. She had 15 watt light bulbs in there. <laughs> and it was so dark, you know. No so anyway, we, we just loved the place and loved Frau Retzloff. We she shared... lived in the house as well? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. We shared the kitchen and the bathroom with her. Okay. Uh, but we had our own living room and bedroom. Sure. And... Okay. What was school like for the children? Um, they went to the Armed Forces School. Mm -hmm. But they it... did get to take German. Yeah. Was it very close to where you were living, or how did they... No, they had to uh, walk a couple blocks and then take a bus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that was a nice experience for them. It was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. It really was. And then did you do some traveling, too, while you were there? Oh, yes. Uh, before we came home, we, uh, we bought a little Volkswagen Beetle over there. I used to have one. Yeah, I think we got it for $1,100. And the four of us went that next summer, you know, around Europe. Yeah. Anyway, we had that car 13 years and sold it for the same amount we bought it for. But <laughs> That's a good buy. <laughs> but yeah. uh, before Tip got over there, a uh, friend, uh, Professor, well, he wasn't a professor then, Detlef Greger called, and he said he'd like to meet us over in East Berlin. And I kind of gulped, but I said, okay. So anyway, <laughs> we took a bus as far as I knew how to take a bus to Checkpoint Charlie. And then uh, we walked away, it started to rain, and I had to buy an umbrella, I remember. But then, well, anyway, I think we ended up taking a taxi the rest of the way. <laughs> and, you know, you have to ha had to hand them our passports and... It took an hour at least to get through, and I thought, oh, Detlef's not going to be there any longer to meet us. But he was there. But the kids were so scared. There were so many military, I military people standing around with guns, you know. They didn't say a word the whole afternoon we were with. It's a little un unnerving. Yeah. Yeah, all right. But this was before your husband got over there. That was before Tip right. got there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and imagine that was sort of stark. I mean, there's not not much life in East Berlin. Was there oh, much no. activity? Oh no, it was just like night and day between West mm -hmm. and East Berlin. Just mm -hmm. like night and day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this professor and his wife had found a a German teacher for me, Mariana Preuss, and we became wonderful friends. Okay. And um, yeah, she passed away about 10 years ago. She'd been a refugee herself from Prussia. Finally had gotten to yeah. Berlin. But anyway, it was a wonderful year. I bet, right. Yeah. yeah. And then after you came back, what was next? Did you went back to Washington? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was 63, 64. And then, well, in 66, we moved here. And I should... <laughs> How did you have, how did he get, a, how did he hear about the job? Did they invite him for an interview, or how did he happen to come here? <clears throat> I don't know how, you know, they mm -hmm. heard about him, probably just through his, sure. all the work he'd done and right. all. Oh, yeah. Um, they invited him for an interview. They brought him back for an interview, and when they brought him back, they brought me back, too. And they drove us down Main Street. Downtown? Downtown, Lafayette. And I thought to myself, Tip, you can't say yes to this. <laughs> but of course, I didn't say anything, and he did say yes. But you know, as soon as we got here, I just loved it. 
the people make all the difference. What was what was it like then? I mean, there was there much there was must have been a uh, Loeb's must have been there a department store. Yes, Loeb's. Mm-hmm. And didn't I understand? Wasn't there a Penny's or a Woolworths? Yeah, J C Penny's was down there where the um, where the uh, bank is uh, now. No, no, or, it's the county offices. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And on that on that corner. On that corner. Yeah, and there was a I think there was a Woolworths and Kresge's. Wow, that's pretty good. Uh huh. Yeah. And Lowe's was, you know, it's a big size department store. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, then tell us about when you first came. Describe what, what the campus was like and where you lived. Well. When you got here. Our first place to live was in the graduate house. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if we knew that before we came or not. But anyway, <laughs> we were there for six weeks and uh, had to eat out a lot because... You know, but anyway, after six weeks, we got um, one of the Purdue houses uh, right on the corner of uh, North River Road and Happy Hollow, and we're uh, so glad to have that. It was really nice, and uh, I'm just sorry they're all down now, but um, let's see, that was in 66, Mm -hmm. and uh, then the next year, we found this house. Moved here. Right. Mm-hmm. Did you drive across country, or did they have the thing when you came? Did you drive? Oh or yes. Was it, okay. And then yes. you had your thing shipped and everything. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Was the the pharmacy building when he came is not the building is today? You might, oh, for no. researchers, tell what the where it was located. Oh, what is the name of it now? It was right next to Schleiman. Yes. Yeah. Schleiman is the is the building yes. now, right? Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And that in that where Schleiman Hall is. Okay. Yes, and mm-hmm. um, that, that I guess pharmacy school was there until 1970. Yeah, if. the dedication was in 1970 when they built uh-huh. that. Okay, uh-huh. right. Well, tell us a little bit about so your uh, interaction with the school and faculty and students. Tell us a little oh, bit about that. Oh, well, you know, there were just about 25 on the pharmacy faculty at that time. Uh-huh. And now, I don't know, I think there's hundreds or something. <laughs> but... Um, and there aren't too many of those old faculty ones around anymore. <laughs> but uh, oh, it was it was really wonderful. Um, had a lot of interaction with um, all, all the faculty, and uh, started having a Christmas party over here, the house here, and uh, that was nice. It really was fun, right. yes. Oh, yes. And uh, right. when the faculty was that small, you know, we could manage it. <laughs> so we did that every year. Yeah. Did you go to? How about athletics? Were you, did you go to games? We what went. To fo- we went to football games. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I guess you could probably tell we weren't born Hoosiers since basketball was wasn't our favorite, but. And it grows on you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about the campus. What was that like when you came? Not as many buildings as today. Oh, no. And, uh, you know, you could drive in right to Hubdy Hall. Or right off Northwestern. Right off of Northwestern. Right. There was an For Which researchers, was, there was an oval, and you could be yes, part of Yes, yeah. Right. It was really pretty, and yes. it was a beautiful fountain. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And... Um, well, let's see, what other... Then there were some university events that you went to, and then uh, Dr. Hubdy was president when you came. Yes. And he had probably some things at his house. Oh, yes. For the and researchers, that's when his... Hubdy lived on 7th Street, not where the current yes. president. Yes, mm-hmm, oh. mm-hmm. Yeah, he had, he had parties at his house, and that was nice, on 7th Street. Right, it was yeah. beautiful. Uh-huh. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, then he became uh, vice president for academic affairs in 86. Your husband did. Yes. And so you, that kept you even busier, I bet. Oh, yes. <laughs> a lot more things. Something all the time. But but it was fun. It right. really was. Right. I mean, all the, you know, the dinners over in the North and South ballrooms of the Union. Um, and then he would probably give talks as well, too. He did, yes. Right. Oh, yes. Did he have to do much traveling as the dean? Did you go with him? On any, did he have to go on any oh, trips? We went around the world. 
Well, Tell, how, yeah. did, how did that come about? Just different trips? Oh, oh different trips. Uh -huh. We I went to Germany every year. He had a meeting over there um, with the hmm, Gesellschaft für Arzneipflanzenforschung. Um, so that was wonderful. Um, I gather you must have gone to Asia too. We went to China one year. Uh, he well, maybe that was when he was vice president. One year we took uh, President Beering's place because Purdue did have some association with uh, Zhejiang University down in Hangzhou. So we went there. That was wonderful. Then we went to China another year. Um, and part, that was on business, it was for some meeting, of course, first. But then he and I went on our own um, up the Lee River. We were on a boat, and all of a sudden, six uh, Chinese girls came up to me about one inch from my face and were just staring at my hair, you know. <laughs> wow. I don't think they'd ever seen a light haired person. But anyway, and then on up to see those, um, we call them, the people the down on, under the ground. Oh, <laughs> the soldiers. That, the oh. soldiers that the, I know the, that uh, <laughs> the exhibit, it's been here one time. It was at the Metro, the New York Metropolitan Museum. Mm, yeah, one time. Part of it, but yeah. oh, this is you, just a huge you, place. Yes, right. Anyway. You saw the Great Wall, I'm sure, didn't you? No, we saw the Great Wall. Right. Oh, yes. And... Uh, then we were in India one year, and um, Egypt, and um, well, went to per down to Peru a lot. He taught uh, a class down there in the Amazon jungle. Oh, well, tell us a little bit about that. How did um, that come about? That came about uh, through, oh, a group down in Texas, uh, headed by Mark Blumenthal, and um, who was Mark, the one that was on our stay in the library or on the uh, faculty? Mark Blumenthal was he on? Oh, no, it was a different one. Okay. No, he uh, has kind of the oh, uh, well, he puts out Herbal Gram. Oh, okay. Magazine and so mm -hmm. on. But um, anyway, pharmacists from various schools. Uh, would go down once a year and each have a different class and pharmacists would go down or pharmacy students uh, and they would get credit for doing this and uh, oh that was just was it for, how long was it for a whole semester oh no oh. no that would be just um, oh I forget how long we would be there maybe a couple weeks oh, okay mm -hmm. sort of a short like a short course a short course sure. yeah okay mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. all right did you ever go on any any trips with the presidents at all when they uh, did some traveling? Like right. they would maybe visit alums or things of that sort. I'm trying to remember if we went once with Dr. Beering. Okay. Because he took they took some trips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. But. Um, and then when uh, he was vice president, probably as I said earlier, he had more activities, and it was quite a little bit of a change then from the pharmacy. Oh yes, yeah, yes it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was very, uh, it's fascinating and it is, it's a joy, really right. a joy. Sure, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about, um, he got some awards, about the Sagamore of the Wabash, for example. Talk a little bit about some of the awards that he got. Oh. Was he surprised? Yes, on some oh occasions. yes, he got more awards than you can just imagine. That's nice. And um, I have... He got um, um, honorary doctor of science degrees uh, from the University of Nebraska in 1987 and then from the University of um, Connecticut in um, 1998 mm -hmm. and in um, 1999. An uh, honorary Doctor of Science from Purdue, and then in the year 2000, he got an Honorary Doctor of Science, uh, 
they call it, have some more added to it, but from the um, University of Wittenberg over in Halasala and the town of Wittenberg in, in Germany. Germany. Mm -hmm. okay. And you were you went along with them on that? Oh yes, okay. of course, yes. How is that ceremony different from, say, getting an honorary in the States? Is it, uh, tell us a little bit about the ceremony. Well, uh, you know, in the States, it, it goes along with the graduation. Right, as of, Purdue does. Uh-huh. But over there, it was just that. <laughs> just the award. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And mm -hmm. it's a, uh, probably, uh, they have a lecture with it or just... Uh, oh, yes, they had uh, a couple of uh, lectures, uh, good friends, his speaking, you know, about him. and oh, uh, nice. Yeah, Professor yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. Heinz Floss. Uh, he was on the faculty here at one time. Yes. That's right. Uh -huh. We met him over in Germany in that year, 63, and then Tip brought it, him, him and his family over here. Uh, to be on the faculty. Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember meeting him when he was here. Yes. Yeah, very nice. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it was just a beautiful occasion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the, uh, how about the Purdue Women's Club? Tell me about, were you involved in that? What sort of activities did you do for the Purdue Women's Club? Mm -hmm. I, I was involved, I, I was never an officer or anything, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but, um, oh, you know, their luncheons sure. and that sort of and thing. And their special events, and they have some special interest groups, too. Oh yes, right. and, and the tours. And the play. tours. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Now they have even a lecture series. Uh, they give some talks and things like that. Oh. And, you know, I see in in the booklet because I belong to it as well. Mm -hmm. That's really mm -hmm. nice, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, he also got a. He was he was president of the American Institute of the History of Pharmacy, wasn't he? Yes, he was. My goodness, so much. Tell us a little bit about that lecture series that you've got. Uh, she's had, she has the brochure of this lecture series. This oh, started. yes, this is the Tyler Lecture Series, right. and uh, it has been um, provided for by e Eli Lilly for many years. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it just, it's once, uh, one, once, one, once one a time, year, once one a time year. a year. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, one important thing too, he was the first president of the American Society of Pharmacognosy, which he helped uh, found. found. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he was their president from 1959 to 61. Okay, and he was president also of the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy from 70 to 71, and president of the Institute of the History of Pharmacy from 93 to 95. And. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, he wrote some books on herb, herbals, wasn't that? Tell us a little about his research. And was herbals one of the things that he was interested in? Yes, of course, the medicine that comes from plants. Sure. sure. And uh, yes, he wrote several books uh, that were very well received. And um, he wrote a column uh, every month for Prevention Magazine. Mm hmm on that. But one thing, you know, he always told the truth. If they weren't any good uh, medically, he said so. And uh, they had to be scientifically proven sure, right. to be good. I remember the book he wrote, The Hoosier Who's your home remedies? Right. Yes. I had I bought a copy for my brother-in-law who's a do who was a doctor and uh, he was he signed it for me and uh, he was. He appreciated the book oh. very much, so it was nice. Oh, good. It yeah, good. I, I scanned it before I gave it to him. <laughs> he got more recipes in quotes from people all over Indiana for that yeah. book. Was a, yeah, it was a good idea to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Were you involved in the president's council? Did you do some things with the president's council? Um, well, I'm a member, but. Um, and they they also sometimes have tours too, don't they? Yes. The no, I've never gone right. on a okay. tour. Um, uh, how about Chauncey Village? How has that changed since you've been here? Chauncey Village has well, changed a lot. Well, you know, one thing, when we first came, Vaughn's bookstore right. was in a an old house kind of back on another street, just back of where Vaughn's is now. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, of course, he's been where he is now for many years. Right. Yeah. Was there ever a gross, was there a grocery there at one time or not? Oh, I don't remember but a grocery. Not as, not as many restaurants, probably, as oh, there are no. now. Oh, yeah. no. No, I don't think there was that 
court or whatever it's called, that, where, no. the, where the parking, the Chauncey Village, where the parking area is, yes. and where the streets mm-hmm. are and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And there used to be a post office there, a branch there, too. And Arts, I think, Arts Drugstore was there, too. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, yes. Right, the local mm-hmm. drugstore. Oh, right. yes. Yeah. Um, any other, some, do you have some notes that you want to share with us about anything particular? Uh, I think we've, uh, anything special that comes to mind? Let's see. I think I've... What else did you do then in your retirement? Did you do mostly traveling when he retired? Oh, yes. Okay. We still went over to Germany sure. every year okay. uh, to that meeting of the Gesellschaft für Arzt und Pflanzen Forschung um, research of medicinal plants. Sure. <laughs> and, um, did, he yeah. do any, did he do any teaching at all after he retired? Or Let's just to, or any well, guest, guest lectures, maybe? Yes, he retired actually in um, 1991, but he did go back to the school of pharmacy, he had an office, and um, he did, um, well, he did a lot of writing. That gave him a chance to do that. Yes. All right, mm-hmm. yeah. Did a lot of writing. All right. And then you did some traveling and things like that. <clears throat> yes. Got a um, favorite Purdue tradition? Um, you know, I thought about that, and I, I think maybe it was the uh, Purdue Christmas show. That's nice. <laughs> I think that is very wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. that is. Mm-hmm. It's very good, and mm-hmm. just it comes at the right time, and it just gets you right set for the rest of the month. That's right. Right. Yes. How about uh, let's talk about your family? Tell us about you have two children. Did have they two go to, children? Did they go to Purdue? Yes, they both graduated from Purdue. Mm-hmm. What, where, what schools? Uh, Jean graduated from pharmacy school, um, and um, and she, she was. Well, her father was the dean. She was married. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's always interesting. Uh, and uh, yes, she was a, a pharmacist for many years. Where Where did she work? What pharmacy here in town? Or oh, they were married. She married. Uh-huh. And. Um, was her husband a pharmacist too? Yes, he graduated in pharmacy school, and they first went to um, um, University of Michigan, where he got his uh, master's degree in Ann Arbor, and uh, she worked there while he went to school. And um, after he got that, they moved to um, Kalamazoo, and she was a pharmacist there. And, in uh, a retail, in a drugstore, or in a company? In up a, a, a um, retail pharmacy. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. Mm-hmm. And then they moved down to Anderson, Indiana, mm. and she worked in a, a retail pharmacy there. And he too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then son David graduated in chemistry, <laughs> and uh, he got hit, let's see, he was married. After he and his... Did he meet his wife here? Oh, yes. Kim Baker. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, let's see. He, they moved to uh, California. He got his Ph.D. from Caltech. And their son, Michael, was born there. <laughs> and then after David got his Ph.D., his first job was with Columbia University back in New York City. Um, and so they were there, and that's where their daughter was born, little Anna. And um, they stayed there until Mike got old enough to go to school. <laughs> and somehow they didn't care too much for the schools right in Manhattan. And um, they so, were living in Manhattan. Oh yeah, he could. David could walk to university. Um, anyway, he had an offer to go to the University of Oregon, and that's so that's where they went <clears throat> in 1985. So he's been there a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is this in Portland? No, it's in Eugene. Eugene, right. Eugene. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So both uh, their children are married now. <laughs> you got grandchildren. 
too. Great grandchildren or not? Uh, no great grandchildren yet, but what I will has have this next October. Anna, granddaughter Anna. Very nice. Is expecting. <laughs> she's a nurse. Okay. Uh -huh. She's married, of course, and her husband just finished law school. And uh, grandson Mike works for a computer company in um, Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And yeah. his wife uh, is a math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Mm -hmm. And where's and where's your where's your daughter now? Where does she live? My Here, daughter. Uh -huh. She lives here in Lafayette. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Does she work for a pharmacy here in town? No. Okay. Okay. But she's living close by, which is nice. Yes. Oh, that's yes. Good. Mm -hmm. she, where, she had some children too. No. Oh. No, okay. she had no children. Okay. So she's staying close to home then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about um, how about an outstanding event in your life? Anything? Would you like to share well, with the Well, you know, I thought about that, and the first thing that came to my mind was my marriage. Nice. That is special. Mm -hmm. Very special. Very special. And it's outstanding. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Very good. I mean, I just, uh, well, I thank the Lord my, for my whole life. It's, but. Um, it's been good. That's nice. That yeah. was very special. Yeah. Got any uh, closing comments that you'd like to share with the for the researchers? Anything special comes to mind? Well, <laughs> I think uh, Purdue is a wonderful university, and uh, I'm just so thankful for all the faculty. Uh, I think, you know, it's a good faculty, really, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I'm thankful that that the um, like the president and so on are so uh, think so often of the faculty, oh dear. and I'm so glad that they are concerned about the faculty and getting good faculty, right. <laughs> and uh, are thinking of the students and what's best for them, and um, and besides, it's a I think it's a wonderful town to live in. People are friendly, and um, it's just very pleasant. It's a good life. It's a good life. Yeah. That's right. Thank you very much. <laughs> this concludes the time. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, well.